Partial download. Failed. Full download. Failed. Unload application and address. Failed. Reset device. Failed. Safety module from MDT blocked ETS programming successfully. This is the safety module from MDT. It prevents all connection-oriented access of the ETS, such as the programming and also the unloading of the bus devices in the KNX line. Inside the box you will find A quick start guide and the safety module. The safety function is started automatically after bus voltage recovery or programming of the safety module. The deactivation of the safety function is possible depending on the safety level via the control buttons on the device and or with the safety password via telegram. Safety module can monitor up to 100 KNX devices cyclically. Safety module is very useful when KNX devices are accessible by guests. For example in hotels, apartments, public buildings, like schools, gym, etc. On front of the device, there are four buttons for selecting the operating modes, the programming button, and five LED indicators. Two hours button interrupts safety mode for two hours. Twelve hours button interrupts safety mode for twelve hours. Safe button activates security mode. By pressing the clear button, you acknowledge the alarms and turn off alarm LED indicator. The KNX programming mode is activated and deactivated by pressing the programming button. Let's start. From Catalogs, select MDT. And search for safety module. Add it in your project. Let's start with the parameters. Start up timeout. Here you can set the time between a restart and the functional start of the device. I will set it 10 seconds. With operation cycle time you can define how often the operation status will be sent to the KNX bus. So this object can be used to detect whether the device is still connected and working. For this tutorial, I will set the cycle time to 1 minute. Language selection for status output will be English. I will leave operating hours counter active and the object length to bytes. Let me explain you what these objects are. The objects 222, 223 and 224 are for the operating hours counter. Object 222 operating hours is for the total hours that safety module is connected and working. Object 223 operating hours since last restart is for hours that safety module is connected and working but after the last restart of the device. Object 224 operating hours reset is for resetting operating hours. Now let's create the group addresses for these objects. In my security main group I will create a middle group with name safety module. Now I will add a group address for the operation status object with name operation status. One group address for the operating hours object with name operating hours. One for the operating hours since last restart object. And one for the operating hours reset. Allow me now to link the group addresses with the group objects. In order to make the functionality more easy to understand, I created a small project in Iridium Studio. 
So, as you can see, I created the virtual safety module with all its functions. That is why I like so much iReady Mobile, because it gives you a tool in order to create a visualization without limits. So, as you can see from the device status card, the device is online and working for total 68 hours. The last time I restart the safety module was before 14 hours. Allow me to restart safety module from ETS. As you can see, operating hours since last restart is now zero. Finally, let's test a reset operating hours. If you send one in operating hours reset group address, both operating hours counters will be reset. Safety module creates events for programming attempts for bus power reset and for lost devices. It sends these events in the bus using string sequences and it can also save these events in its memory. So, for example, in a programming attempt device, module will generate an event like this one. Attack destination address 116 at 19th 12. In order to be able to store the events with correct time, date time object and date object must be linked with a KNX time server. As time server, I am using my BAO 777. More details I will show you in the next episode. So, status output of last event is a string sequence that is generated and sent in the bus one time every time that a new event is occurred. I will select one time sending of string in order to be able to use it in a visualization like a string sequence. This is the relevant group object, 217th. I will create a group address with name, status output last event. And I will link it with the object. 217th. Let's test it. From ETS, I will try to restart one device. Since safety module is in lock mode, every ETS programming attempt will be blocked. And an event will be generated to inform me for an attack event in device with physical address 114 at 1921. Status output for visualization, object 218th, is required in order to display in a visualization the events that are stored in device's memory. Again, a string sequence is used. Switching time of different sides is the time between each string in the sequence. I will set this time to 1 second. I don't want any repetition, so I will set it to 0. This is the object 218th. In order to navigate between the events, you will need also object 219th, scroll text object, and object 220, confirm selection object. Let's create the relevant group addresses in order to test it. I will create the status output visualization group address, the menu scroll group address, and the menu confirm group address. Allow me to link the group addresses with the relevant objects.
In order to be able to use the events in a visualization, the event memory from programming attempt must be set to log and sent on bus. I want also visual confirmation from the device LED, so I will leave display on alarm LED to yes. I want to log bus power reset into event memory, so I will set it to active. Finally, I need also log and send on bus along with display on alarm LED for device monitoring of group 1. I will use monitoring group 1 later for monitoring some KNX devices. Time for testing. By pressing the scroll button you can see the first event. By pressing again the scroll button you can navigate between events. Attack means programming attempt, for example full or partial download. By pressing the confirm button a string sequence starts to inform me that the destination device was 113 and the event was happened on Wednesday at 18th 08. Let's check also this event where a device was lost. By pressing confirm you can see that the device with physical address 114 was lost at 19.53 on Wednesday. And another example where a power reset was occurred at 12.05 on Wednesday. Since I enabled before the alarm LED, let me show you the relevant group objects for it. Object 231 is the alarm status object. It is activated when there is a programming attempt, a bus power reset or a device lost event. When an alarm is detected, the alarm LED indicator in the device will be turned on. Alarm status object can be set from safety functions. So, parameter send message of programming attempt via one bit object must be set to active. Object 228 is the acknowledge alarm object and has the same functionality as the clear button on the device. So, when you turn acknowledge alarm on is the same like pressing the clear button on the device and the alarm status from alarm goes to no alarm. Acknowledge alarm object can be set from safety functions. Parameter reset of alarms over one bit object must be set to active. For these two objects, I will create two group addresses. Alarm status and acknowledge alarm. And I will link them with the relative objects. In iVidium Studio, I created a clear button in order to link it with the acknowledge alarm group address and an alarm LED for the alarm status group address. Let's test it. From ETS, I will try to reset a device. As you can see, reset was blocked by safety module. And my alarm LED indicator was turned on. If I press the clear button, I will acknowledge the alarm and the alarm LED will be turned off. According to your needs, you can select different safety levels from safety functions card. By default, the safety level is low. Let me explain you all levels one by one. If you select safety level off, all buttons on the device can be used. In safety level low, the clear button where you acknowledge an alarm is disabled. The buttons for temporary activation 2 hours and 12 hours are enabled. Programming button is enabled. In safety level medium, Clear button is disabled, 
2 hours and 12 hours buttons are disabled and programming button is enabled. In safety level high, clear button is disabled, 2 hours and 12 hours button are disabled and programming button is disabled. If you select this level though, you have to be very careful and be sure that you have set correctly the parameters for activation deactivation of safety mode, otherwise you will not be able to reprogram safety module again. For this tutorial, I will set safety level to medium. Safety mode activation can be done with this parameter, over 1 bit or over 14 bytes using a password. For this demo, I will activate both parameters. I will change the default password to Close Sesame. Likewise, you can disable safety mode over 1 bit object or over 14 bytes object using a password. For this demo, I will activate both parameters, but in a real project, I would prefer only the activation over 14 bytes object with password. I will change the default password to Open Sesame. For duration of the activation, I will select 2 hours. In a previous step, we activated the Acknowledge Alarm object over 1 bit object through this parameter. We can do the same over a 14 bytes object using a password. I will change the default password to Reset Sesame. Finally, the status of safety mode can be activated here. For this demo, I will select the status to be sent on bus every 10 minutes. Let me show you now the relevant objects. Object 227 is for activating or deactivating safety mode over 1 bit object. Object 229 is for activating or deactivating safety mode over 14 bytes object with password. Object 230 is for safety mode status. It's time now to create the relevant group addresses. I will create a group address with name Safety Switch Control. And I will link it with Object 227. Safety Password Control Group Address. And I will link it with Object 229. And the Safety Status Group Address to link it with Object 230. In Iridium Studio, I created this button in order to activate and deactivate safety mode. For simplicity, I named it Block ETS Programming. I created also an edit box in order to be able to activate and deactivate safety mode using a password. For safety mode status, I made this green LED icon when safety mode is active. And this red LED icon when safety mode is inactive. Remember that from parameters, we set duration of the activation to hours. Let's test it. As you can see from the green LED, safety mode is active, so every ETS programming attempt will be blocked. So, let me try every download option. every unload option. Every info option. And reset device. Indeed, when safety mode is active, all ETS programming attempts were blocked. 
I will now deactivate safety mode using the one bit object. Safety mode has been deactivated for two hours. Of course, now ETS programming is allowed. I will turn safety mode back to active and I will test activation deactivation using a password. In order to deactivate safety mode, I have to send my deactivation password, which is Open Sesame. Safety mode has been deactivated. My activation password is Close Sesame. Safety mode has been activated. Back to ETS. Safety module can monitor up to 100 KNX devices cyclically. As soon as a device is missing or no longer responds to a defect, an alarm message will be generated. The monitor devices can be divided in up to five groups. In order to enable device monitor, you have to activate this parameter. Polarity of status. If you select as operation object, the data type will be one bit state. So, when a KNX device is active, the device status will be active. And when a KNX device is defective or lost, the device status will be inactive. If you select as alarm, the data type will be one bit alarm. When a KNX device is active, the device status will be no alarm. And when a KNX device is defective or lost, the device status will be alarm. I will set polarity of status as alarm. I will leave the rest of parameters with default values. If you enable object for disconnecting of KNX devices, a switch object for every device group will be enabled. So, for example, you can divide the devices that you want to monitor in two groups. And KNX bus line must be routed through the contact of a switch actuator. If there is an error, the switching actuator will be switched off for a duration that you can set from this parameter and then switched on again. If the error remains, the switching process will not be repeated. For this tutorial, I will not use this function, so I will set this parameter to not active. It's now time to monitor some KNX devices. Let's start with device 1. From monitor device, you can select the device monitoring method. Via physical address, active request. With this method, the device to be monitored is based on its physical address. According to monitoring interval time, safety module will ask the device if it's active. Here is an example from bus monitor where every 30 seconds safety module asks if the actuator is active. Since the actuator didn't respond, safety module repeated the telegram two more times. Actuator still didn't respond, so safety module generated an alarm message. In this telegram, actuator responded, so safety module generated a no alarm message. Second method is via group address, active request. According to monitoring interval time, safety module will send a read request in a device and the device should react with a response telegram. Here is an example where every 30 seconds, safety module sends a read request in a humidity sensor. Humidity sensor didn't react with a response telegram, so safety module repeated the read request two more times. Humidity sensor still didn't respond, so safety module generated an alarm message. In this telegram, safety module sent it a read request and humidity sensor responded with its value. So safety module generated a no alarm message. The third method is via group address, passive receiving. According to monitoring interval time, safety module doesn't send a read request but only evaluates whether there is a value on a group address. In this example, humidity sensor sends its value every 30 seconds. But at this point, 30 seconds after the last value was sent, humidity sensor didn't send a new value. So safety module generated an alarm message. This method, if it's possible, should always be used to keep the bus load as low as possible. 
it is also ideal for devices that send their values cyclically, for example temperature, humidity, etc. So for device 1, I will select via group address, passive receiving. Device 1 will monitor a humidity sensor which has a 2 bytes object for humidity, so I will select object size 2 bytes. Humidity value is sent cyclically every 30 seconds, so monitoring interval should be 30 seconds. I will assign device 1 in group 1. The group objects for device 1 are the 2 bytes object 4, which should be linked in the existing group address for humidity. And the 1 bit object 104 for the monitoring result of device 1. So, if device 1 is active, monitoring result will be no alarm. And if device 1 is not active, monitoring result will be alarm. For this object, I will create a group address with name Monitor Device 1. For device 2, I will select via physical address. The device that I want to monitor is in the same area with safety module. The device's physical address is 114, so here I will write 4. For monitoring interval, I will select 30 seconds. And I will assign this device in group 1. Device 2 has only one 1-bit one object 105 for monitoring result. I will create a group address with name Monitor Device 2 and I will link it with Object 105. Let's test it. I will disconnect from Bus Device 1, which is my humidity sensor. Safety module has generated a device lost event for Device 1. Here I have a list with the devices I want to monitor. With red color you can see the defective or lost devices. If I click on this device I can see more details like location, physical address, event, etc. I will now disconnect device 2 which is a switching actuator. Safety module has generated a device lost event for device 2. As you can see now, I haven't a second defective or lost device. Object 221 is for deleting all the events that are saved in device's memory. I will create a group address with name Reset Saved Events. And I will link it with Object 221. So, from the visualization, I will send one to the relevant group address. As you can see, all events were deleted. Allow me to share with you one more thing. As you can see, safety mode is active. So every programming attempt will be blocked. But this device is an IP device. So if I click on bus and select use direct IP connection if available, Then, for this IP device, I can make a partial download even if safety mode is active. So, safety module is not for IP devices. This was the safety module from MDT. 
more key next tutorials are coming. So, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my tutorials, consider subscribing to my channel. See you in the next episode.